it's it's great to be on Not the Andrew Ma Show interviewing uh, Mashir Al Fara again. Um, we haven't spoken to you for uh, a few months now. Um, how are you doing, Mashir? I can't describe myself as strong, but obviously uh, within I'm, I'm extremely uh, sad and extremely worried about what's going on in the Gaza Strip, uh, especially with the fact that every, almost every day I hear of a beloved friend, cousin, relative who either been killed or injured or uh, been made disabled by the Israeli bombing or um, have their houses uh, completely destroyed. Now, my own family, you know, we lost every single house. I lost my family home. My sister Maha lost her house. Her son Mohammed lost his house, destroyed completely by air F-16. My sister Mona lost her house as well in a, in a bombing in Gaza City and my brother Monar as well. So, um, but of course, I mean, when you think of, of, of the, of the, catastrophe of the of the real uh, genocide that's taken place you think you're lucky at least uh, i'm still alive and my uh, you know my family is still alive you know but um, obviously more so many beloved ones every day we hear of or something like uh, how's you know when you destroy people's lives not only life is, is really really sacred but if somebody worked for 35 years uh, hard to build a house for him and his family and then suddenly in one uh, criminal deliberate bombing uh, he loses everything and when the army knows exactly that this house is empty it represents no military value at all or threat to the army it's just collective punishment of the ugliest nature and I'm not exaggerating when I'm saying that I mean this is, if you allow me, Crispin, this is cowardly because army should fight army. Army should fight militias. But what they've done, they launched a war on the civilians, for civilian population. My family house was empty completely. And the entire neighborhood houses were empty. No military threat in the heart of Khan Yunus. Never. Even the Israelis never treated that area as a military threat because it's difficult to have any military threat there. It's in the heart of a very, very you know, heavily populated, crowded area, yet they bombed it. I mean, your footage that you that you filmed when you were in um, Khan Yunis uh, after 7th of October until you left, um, I could see how vibrant the the city was um, with the market mm -hmm. and, and you, you took lots of footage of, of the market and the people and the children and yeah. the clown the clown who came and played uh, who yeah. after the bombing. And, um, you know, how do you feel thinking that all of that, those yeah. roads, those markets, I they feel, don't, they're not there anymore. I mean, they're just. I feel, yeah, I feel gutted. I feel gutted because I, you know, by sheer coincidence, I saw a new video from Khan Yunus and the title is Khan Yunus as if it was hit by an earthquake. It's just unbelievable. Even our castle, the Barkouk castle, which is, you know, uh, 725 years old, the pride of everybody who lives in Khan Yunis, was, was bombed by the Israelis. The main mosque bombed by the Israelis. The streets, the shopping area, uh, the high street, you know, big parts of the camp, complete wiping out, complete wipe. Khan Yunis is, is like the worst affected in this. And it, it really hurts me a lot because Khanis was the shelter initially for all the people who were forcefully evacuated. They went to Khanis, then they were ordered by force, by bombing, to leave and go to Rafah. And now we are waiting what will happen in Rafah. They are doing what they're doing now in Nusayrat refugee camp and around it. They bombed and killed you know, hundreds of people over the last few days. They bulldozed big areas. And as I said, they extended their zone to 49 uh, square kilometers. Just like that, you go for the people, you punish the people, you punish the civilians, and no one is paying attention. On the contrary, uh, Cameron, uh, the foreign secretary, he just slip of a tongue, he said, we may have to talk about, about um, restrictions of arms. So then immediately he retreated and said, no, 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 we can't. How can you, how can you not when you're, given, when you're given when factories in Britain, when factories in Britain are manufacturing the most lethal, you know, Parts of the most lethal killing machines of the Israeli army, the F-16s, F-35s, the drones, hands drones, 
it's just it's just beyond belief. Mm -hmm. uh, however, having said that, I must say something because it, it touches me to it touches me because because of the beautiful, the great support of so many British people, good people, people who care for justice and freedom. I don't lose faith in, in humanity and in people. You've sent me a video um, of your activity that you did on the uh, motorway. Um, amazing, and, amazing. And I, I'll just play the, the video um, so people can see it, and then maybe you can tell us how, how, how different the response is from normal people. Absolutely, absolutely. Another banner drop on the motorway with a group of activists in a rainy day, but very, very busy traffic. We are getting a lot of support. Thank you. Thank you very much. The police is trying to stop us. But we are on a busy, busy uh, junction 31 on day one. Thank you. Thank you very much. Police is trying to make us leave the place. Five police cars. But we stand in our ground. The cavalry are out. Big number of police officers as well. But we stood our ground. And we finish when we want to finish. Thank you. Thank you so much. Waving inside the cars, others are um, hooting. It's really good, really good. Thank you! Woo! Oh, thank you very much! Very, very little abuse compared to the support. Thank you! Thank you! Woo! 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 It was it was very heartening, very very heartening, uh, and as I said, vast majority of hooting support and a little bit of people showed us fingers and whatever. Uh, but the stand of the police was really really very shocking because we've done this twice before, and other police departments came and just said, "Guys, how long are you here for or whatever?" So thank you, bye 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 bye. How many people you expected? But these people were nasty this time. I don't know if it's going to happen again because we're going to do it again. They were not, uh, you know. Uh, stop us from doing it but um, of course they claimed health and safety and they explained to them that now health and safety we tied it very well and whatever and it will never ever you know for this is the third time and then we had you know, to confront them I had person to confront them and say for goodness sake um, we are pulling our babies from under the rubble we are, we are pulling them sometimes without their limbs you know one of their limbs so if you want to arrest us come on arrest us we're not going away uh, but it was nasty. It wasn't good. Uh, and uh, but, but we stood our ground. But the level of support from the from the uh, lorries, from the the cars, up and down, as you saw. So I couldn't I couldn't like cope with like people on the exchange on top or on the motorway. So they were supporting us, uh, and that's really good. When we stand outside the train station every Friday, I think we have an amazing, amazing support because it's like very, very busy outside the train station. People coming and going, um, cars are going back to to home from work. We go about half five o'clock in the evening. Amazing support. Little bit of abuse. It's it's there, but uh, but the support is overwhelming. That's why I'm saying the government is not paying attention. And uh, mm -hmm. that's why I'm saying hope, hopefully in the new ele next elections, the uh, the general elections, MPs will be punished in areas that is pro-Palestinian for not taking a stand. But we you're you're managing to um, get supplies into into Gaza. I mean, you you were saying that you were doing this uh, when we last spoke that you were you were working on this, and you and you have a charity that helps people there um i've Absolutely. got some pictures i've got some pictures of what you've um been doing uh mm -hmm. recently that you sent mm -hmm. me um mm -hmm. so this is uh a lot of bags of yes of food is I, i'm guessing uh yeah, power food parcels yes so yeah yeah for so so far 4258 families have been receiving the support from the sheffield from the Gaza Relief Fund in Sheffield, of course, with the support from people all over Britain and abroad. When I was there uh, for for uh, five weeks, I was there for, 
uh, I started this there and with me were so many young people. And when I left, I left them in charge and we had a pilot of them working there and they're doing a great, great job every week. Of course, we stopped for about three weeks when Khan Yunis was wiped out of the map because the team was based in Khan Yunis. But now the wholesaler we were we were working with, by the way, he lost two major warehouses. They bombed food warehouses. They bombed his house, killed several members of his family, and they bombed the, 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 the little store under his house who were operating partially from. So he was forcefully evacuated to Rafah, a great man called Rafiq Abakar. He re-established himself in Rafah, so we re-established work with him. Uh, amazing work the team is doing. We pinpointing the support. Uh, we have people who recommend families who are in desperate need, even here from Britain. Some people write to me and say, can you help X and Y? And we contact the team. And nine out of ten, we manage, ten, we manage to, to support them. We are building tents for the, for families who are being thrown. And uh, we so far, like we built now 14 tents. The team builds the tents. As, as you can see, you know, a basic, you know, uh, timber frame. And we cover it with plastic. We put the the uh, the foundations as well. I'd like you to show the photo with the uh, with the uh, toilet as well, because sadly this will go on for for a while. So they are even building a toilet oh, right. for uh, okay. for for the for the uh, for the families. It's really really inspirational. Uh, we we provided over the last two months tens, if not hundreds, of families with powdered milk and nappies. Believe you me, one box of nappies, 42 pieces of nappies, at some stage, the price reached 67 sterling pounds, according to 67 sterling pounds. Can you believe how, how, how much these, you know, these people were put under such pressure, but we try to help. The Palestinians are very resilient because sadly, I said it to you before and I'll repeat it, Crispin, and I hope you, you put this in the report. Uh, it's it's mixture of feelings about resilience of Palestinians. Part of me says, my goodness, I'm so sad for them because of the of the life they've been through, of the suffering the Israelis inflicted every year, every month, every day, every week on them. They became uh, bulletproof to these things, you know, to, to bombing or whatever. And I feel sad for that. On the other hand, I see it as a strength, a massive strength, uh, that the Israelis, no matter what you throw at us, we are strong. But Part of me says I'm sad because they shouldn't be. They should be scared. They should be terrified. But they really bombed them through history, the recent history, through the last eight years, through the last twenty years. Every every aspect of their love was damaged, and destroyed. So they became numb, if you like. It's like the way I felt, numb, you know, because of the level of killing around me when I was there, and still now, you know, you feel numb. And I'll tell you something. I'll tell you something really personal. Uh, I lost a son to cancer on the 1st of November, 2021. And I cried him every day since, since he died, a lot. And when, when the attack on Gaza happened, suddenly I stopped crying every day. I'll, I'll remember him and cry every three, four days because of the scale of killing around me and of course of the suffering around me. It numbs your natural feelings. It makes you think, you know, Something like so crucial to me, like my most beloved son losing him as 16 year old to cancer has been, you know, uh, overtaken by, uh, by, uh, by, by sorrow of different kind, you know. So, so that's what happens to the Palestinians. They are, they get numb because of the accumulation of suffering. And that's terrible. That's like, that's, that's, uh, it happened to me. And I blame myself sometimes. Why I don't cry my guys, my beloved son, every night like I used to and talk to him? Because because of the scare that you see in, your own feelings become like on the back burner. I, I spoke to a beautiful, beloved friend called Zuhair. And he said to me, you wouldn't believe it, Mushir, uh, two weeks ago. He said, I lost my, my uncle, my most beloved uncle, his wife and five of his kids. And I feel numb. I don't feel, I, I am sad, but I'm numb. See the level of, you know, that I, I hope I express myself right. It's like the level of suffering makes you numb, makes you numb to, to your own natural feelings. And that's something they, they denied us, being normal, being normal to feel the pain and be normal to, to uh, you know, because, because of their ongoing crimes. 
Uh, and that's what's happening. Yeah. 